In this video, I'd like to introduce you to a newly created part of the database, the Geoarchaeology Resource Model. And you can see it here within the database amongst all the other cards which will, you will use in the database. So the purpose of the Geoarchaeology Model is to allow us to record geological and geological data in addition to the archaeological evidence. And in some cases, you may want to link the geoarchaeological evidence to the archaeological evidence. So why is it important for us to record um, geological and geomorphological evidence? The main reason is to help us identify where parts of the former landscape in the past uh, are located. This may give us clues as to where we may find undiscovered archaeological sites. It may also give us clues as to environmental change, which may inform us about the preservation state of archaeological sites as well. It can also show us how the environment has changed and thus help us interpret the evidence we have from archaeological sites. For instance, for people in the past responding to environmental changes. This is particularly important for places like um, coastal and marine archaeology, for, co for places like coastlines. These are very dynamic areas where sea level has changed a lot over the past uh, thousands to tens of thousands of years. And as a result, past landscapes and environments and the location of archaeological sites have also changed as well. So before going on to actually showing you how this part of the database works, I'm just going to give you a couple of examples of the kind of evidence, um, the kind of geological and geoarchaeological evidence that we might be inputting into this, um, into this new resource model. just going to give you a few examples here of some of the kinds of evidence which you might record in the geoarchaeology resource model. For example, you might record geomorphological indicators of past sea level. These show you how sea level has changed over time in the geological past and thus how it may relate to archaeological sites. So in this example here, we can see sea level used to be much higher in this location and the sea cut a notch into this former cliff line and we can see the equivalent notch down here at the present. So that's the kind of thing you might record in the geoarchaeology resource model. Uh, in addition, uh, you may also find channels on the seabed, for example, formed when sea level was lower and rivers could cut across um, what is now the seabed. So these would uh, potentially be good locations for sites to have been located along, so these would be important places to record. You may also find there are other elements of the former landscape which are now located underwater but were originally formed on land. So here we can see in many parts of the Mediterranean and North Africa you have these ridges in shallow water or submerged and these are actually former sand dune ridges which were created um, behind a beach again when sea level was lower. Um, another kind of geomorphological feature which you might encounter, and these ones are very clear on a lot of satellite imagery, are beach ridges. So in this case, in this example from Yemen, we can see an old coastline was located here. But this, is progressive, this bay has progressively been infilled as the beach has slowly advanced to its present position here. So it used to be here and it slowly advanced out each time building up a ridge and moving out into a new ridge and a new ridge and a new ridge and so on. So what this could tell us here is that sea level has potentially fallen, that it used to be higher and located here and has fallen to the present day, or alternatively, that there has been so much sediment supplied to this area that it simply infilled the bay. In addition to the geomorphological evidence, some sediments can also give us a lot of information about the past landscape particularly when we find types of sediment which are not in the location uh, in which they are originally deposited. So where they show that the environment in the past is completely different to what it is today. This is an example here from Lebanon, uh, an exposure in a coastal cliff where we can see these deposits of rounded pebbles and cobbles, which look very much like the material we see on a beach today. So what this would indicate is that the sea level was once much, much higher up and has deposited an ancient beach um, several meters above the present beach. And when you have detailed stratigraphic records, um, 
taken, for example, through cores and boreholes, you can get a very good picture of environmental change. This is a nice example from Syria, from Rasa Benhani, from work by Nick Mariner and co. So we can see here core locations. This is an example of one of the cores, and we can see the different sediments within the core. At the base, you can see here a layer of peat. So this is organic matter. So this must have been deposited on land, but it is now located seven meters uh, below the modern ground surface. So this would indicate to us that sea level must have been lower in order for this to have been land. It was later covered by fine silts and clays, probably from a lagoon, and then later um, covered over by various types of sand. And that what this allows the scientists to do is reconstruct how the landscape has changed from a former um, a land area with lower sea level and gradually turning into a lagoon as sea level starts to rise and finally turning into this modern peninsula which we see today. So these are just some examples of how um, geological and, um, and geoarchaeological evidence can contribute to our understanding of the archaeological record.